Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd like to call to order the September 11th um, City Commission meeting. Um, this meeting is taking place on a Monday instead of our regularly scheduled Tuesday meeting because there are other um, government bodies within Bay County who are also scheduled to do their public hearings for budgets on the same day as our commission meeting. So in order to meet um, requirements, that's what we scheduled. Um, Full disclosure, the governor did give us an opportunity that we could have uh, rescheduled this meeting because of the storms throughout uh, Florida, but we decided since the weather um, held and was okay today that we would go ahead with our meeting rather than postpone it. Um, at this time, I call the meeting to order, and I'd like to call on Commissioner Rodney Friend, if he would, to please lead us in the invocation, if you would please stand. Thank you, Mayor. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We praise you for this day, God, and we stand before you today with, uh, with gratefulness of your mercy and your grace and your covering from the storm, Lord. We just, we do reach out and to you and we pray, God, that you, uh, you bless those that were impacted and families displaced. Father, we just pray that you'll uh, bring everybody back together safely, that communities will rebuild. Lord, let us see uh, through all this your mercy and grace, Father, and people will raise, raise their head and their eyes towards you, Father. Lord, and also on this day, we recognize that 16 years ago, the lives that were lost. Father, we recognize our first responders that serve day in and day out here at our great city. And Father, we just pray that you'll watch over them and protect them. Lord, let us go about today's business. Give us wisdom, guidance, and direction. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America. And, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It is now 5.15 on Monday, September the 11th. I would like to call to order this public hearing. Item A, uh, the time is 5.15. Item A is the tentative millage rate for the 2017 tax roll. Um, I need the resolution um, read at this time, 2017-09690, with a tentative millage rate. Mr. City Manager. Yes, Sorry. Resolution number 2017-09-690, the tentative ad valorem property tax millage rate for municipal purposes to be levied on the taxable property within the city limits of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, during the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2017, and ending September 30, 2018, is hereby set at the rate of 3.9 mils. The percentage by which the millage rate to be levied exceeds the rollback rate of 3.8713, uh, computed pursuant to Florida law, is 0.74 percent. Thank you. Are there, is there a motion that this, wait, we're not doing the motion yet. Is there a motion that we adopt this resolution? Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution 2017-09-690. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Are there any comments or questions or concerns from the public? There appear to be none. At this time, Mr. White, would you please call the roll for a vote? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. I apologize. I was just not following my order there. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. <laughs> <coughs> Item B is the tentative general fund and enterprise fund budget for fiscal year 2017-2018. Um, and there is a motion to adopt, um, will there be a motion to adopt resolution 2017-09-691, the tentative general fund budget and approving the enterprise fund budgets for fiscal year 2017-2018. Uh, Mr. White, would you please read that resolution? Resolution number 2017-09-691, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, adopting a tentative general fund budget and approving tentative enterprise fund budgets for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2017 and ending September 30th, 2018 and appropriating for the purposes specified funds of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida and amount specified for disbursement according to said budget. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt? 
So move. Second. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second. Are there public comments or public questions? Yes, ma'am. Janet Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. I forgot to ask um, a question on the page 20, which is the mayor's and commissioner's uh, sheet. I forgot to ask the question. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a, for the original FY 1718, a FICA amount of 4,427. We've never, not me, but it, it doesn't appear that the city has ever paid FICA and Medicare benefit before, and now we're paying it. Beverly, can you come up? And then answer that question, please. We really should be paying the commissioners through payroll. We haven't been. So starting January 1st, we'll start put it, paying the commissioners through payroll. And so we'll have a FICA amount for the nine months. And that's why that was added. I mean, and as yeah, it was, um, I guess, something that was... Okay, the city, the city attorney is, is, is in agreement. He, he, he has the opinion, I'll let you speak for yourself, but he has the opinion that there should not be a FICA. Yeah, I, we, we just need, uh, my recommendation would be, before we do that, we talk to the auditor, because the commissioners don't actually draw a salary. They get a, a um, unreimbursed, excuse me, it's, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's basically a stipend for, it's a reimbursement for expenses. And we, we, last time we looked at this several years ago, um, the auditor said that that is not, it's a, just a 1099, There's, it's not a payroll check. And so we would need to look at that again before we um, okay. finalize I take, that. Well, I can, um, yeah, we can discuss it then. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm used to it coming through payroll from other cities. I've been yeah, the commission payroll. doesn't actually draw a salary uh, mm -hmm. for the Lynn Haven, Lynn Haven. Okay. Well, that's why I was in there. They, they do receive a 1099, I can tell you that, but they don't actually get a salary. Yes. Uh, did you have an additional question, Mrs. Walker? I have additional. Is that okay if I have another question? Is sure. it okay if I have another question? Absolutely. Okay. On page 30, my 30, I don't know if it's your 30, it's the general fund. It looks like a new department to me, administrative support services. Under general fund? Yes, correct. General fund, administrative support services, and it's page 30, listing the capital outlay schedule. Okay, there's an amount of $292,500. Just above that, it's saying that two employees moved from the finance department to this new, newly named department. Mr. White, would you like to respond? Is all of this $292,000 to outfit an office for these two new employees? No, ma'am. It's the cost associated with those two employees breaking them out from under accounting department to bring, uh, bring them into their self. That's to deal with the contracts with the city as well as the deputy clerk and, and all the grants administration. Uh, those employees were pulled out to make a separate department uh, where we can keep up with that separately. <laughs> So you needed a new phone system, a new air conditioning no, unit? No, ma'am. What happens is you spread those costs across each department because... Extraneous Yes, ma'am. We're spreading it across. And part of that uh, phone system and all is for a citywide phone system. Okay. The currently one we have uh, is very dilapidated. So that part is going across the whole uh, entire system. Then you have things like the AV equipment, the equipment right. we use here. Right. It's 20 plus years old. Uh, we got it patched working now, so it's, it's to replace a lot of those things as far as the capital outlay is. Okay. Uh, my next question is on page 38. Um, that's my 38, and it's general fund expenditures for the streets, and also it, it's showing a capital outlay schedule. Your page 38 is, is what the you capital outlay in red. It's showing pay, okay. uh, item requested is paving, and then it read it says amount of revenue bond subtracted 2017 closing costs expenses, and the amount is 
three million eight hundred and seventy nine thousand five hundred. Yes, ma'am. That's the surtax, the half cent surtax. Oh, that's a half cent. Yes, ma'am. So we did not spend. We were just now starting the paving last week. So most of that money is going to be just rolled over into the next fiscal year. Okay. So in other words, you're expecting. You're We're going to use it all. By, it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else have a question or a concern? Any other comments or questions from the board? Hey, Mr. White, would you please call the roll to accept? To adopt, rather, sorry. Mr. Barnes? Aye. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Friend? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes, and so the resolution is adopted. And this public hearing is closed at 524 Central Time. The next public hearing is opening at 524 Central Time. And item A for this public hearing is a tentative community redevelopment agency budget, the CRA, for fiscal year 2017-2018. At this time, are there any public comments about this particular budget, the CRA budget? Yes, sir. a long time ago. It took us 10 years to get a million dollars in the original CRA. It's been published to the public here that because we are annexing and taking the fuel depot on as a CRA identity, that we will get thousands and thousands of dollars. I don't see any income coming into there. It was alluded to that this money would come instantaneously. That is in Correct. It will not be there for a long time. It took us 10 years to get the original. Therefore, you must consider this and keep this in your mind that that money is not going to be there next year, the year after, and the year after that. We're already paying out of the CRA for that existence of that. And that's why I'm against the CRA joining together. That's a separate subject. I do not see any money that was promised us in the budget for the CRA from the new CRA. I wonder why. The comment is, is duly noted, and I will stand corrected by the attorney if I am wrong on this, but my understanding is that there are still some county approvals that have to happen before that, before that can happen, and that we um, really can't speculate what the amount is going to be until some of the state and county resolutions have been, have been agreed upon. Um, the state is making some um, proposals. Even, yeah, it, it's kind of in the air right now, but we can't move forward until the county moves forward. Is that correct? That, I, that's, that's, my... that's correct, yes, okay. ma'am. The, the CRA mm -hmm. has started the, uh, the plan adoption process to include the Fuel Depot property, and we got an uh, objection notice from the county on that. Um, and, and until that is resolved, it can't be included into the CRA plan. But this, this board is resolved that we we still are of that accord that that annexation, those CRA funds will be part of this CRA and will benefit this CRA. And, and I am very adamant and very much a part of that because I live in the CRA, as you understand, and as many of us do. So I think we all are very adamant about that resolution. Okay, um, any other comments from the public about the CRA budget? All right, would you, um, yes. I'm sorry, Mayor. No, go ahead, please. I just wanted to make sure I understand this. <laughs> So if we uh, pass this CRA budget and what Mr. Walker just spoke of, it will automatically go into that, to those funds? My understanding is that we would amend the budget at that time. I have to defer to attorney. Sure. Yes, ma'am. A budget is just a plan. And so when the plan changes, it just has to come back for a budget amendment. Thank you. Are there other questions from the board? Thank you, though. Um, at this time, um, would you please read the resolution, Mr. White, the um, 2017-09-692, the tentative CRA budget. A resolu resolution number 2017-09-692, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, adopting a Community Redevelopment Agency tentative budget 
for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2017 and ending September 30, 2018 and appropriating for the purposes specified funds of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida Community Redevelopment Agency and amount specified for disbursement according to said budget. Thank you. Is there a motion for acceptance? So moved. Is there a second? Second. There has been a motion and a second to adopt the resolution, the tentative CRA budget. Um, any other public comment? Any other questions? Okay, Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the resolution is adopted, and this public hearing is closed at 528 Central Time. At this time, item number five is the mayor's report. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I had uh, several uh, wonderful opportunities um, since we met before. Um, probably the one that all of us would agree upon was the, the fuel depot closing. On um, We were all very happy to see that happen and looking forward to seeing um, wonderful things happen out there. We had a great day um, here for the city with many uh, past and present city officials and um, uh, Mrs. Whitcoff, who uh, was a big part of uh, the Rails to Trails um, um, push, is with us today. I just want to say hello and thank you for being here again. But she was part of that, and um, as were many members of this board. Um, I had the opportunity to speak um, to the um, Lynn Haven Masonic Lodge during their uh, monthly dinner and had a, an opportunity to meet many of them and to talk with them about what's going on in Lynn Haven, all the accomplishments and, and um, the wonderful things that are happening in the city and had an opportunity to answer questions and it was a, a very enjoyable evening, very enjoyable meal as well. And, um, I've had an invitation to speak to Bay County's Libertarian Party uh, next week about things going on in Lynn Haven. So people all over Bay County are excited about what's happening here. And then I just wanted to um, mention, um, when we get a little further into the agenda, item number 22 um, on our agenda tonight will be a discussion about the medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, this board uh, passed an ordinance um, on January 10, 2017, in which we established a temporary moratorium. And tonight we'll be discussing that. And I think I'll just wait until we get to that item. But I have um, quite a bit of information um, that I just wanted to share with this board and with the public that I learned um, at the League of Cities meeting about what other cities are doing, why they're doing it, and how, how the law is, is reading at this time. So I um, hope everybody will feel comfortable to enter into that discussion and we can decide what we want to do or not to do. Um, so that's all I have. Um, Commissioner Russell, do you have a report? Just a couple of things, uh, Mayor. I uh, wanted to let everyone know about uh, the um, tailgate party that uh, we had up here at the, the Commission Hall, and uh, it went really, really well. A lot of people attended. Um, I'm not sure if I picked the right chili, but, uh, but they were all very good. Um, second thing I want to let the Commission know, I came to one of the open enrollment days uh, for the insurance, um, partially because I did enroll and partially because I wanted to see how this company interacted with our employees. And I just uh, I commend the commission. I think we did the right thing. I think we've done the right thing for the employees. I think we picked the right company to do the job. And um, I think it's going to be a bright future for the employees of Lynn Haven. That's all I've got, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Um, I had a, a few people come to me in the last week and a half. Um, I believe that uh, uh, our city manager took care of trimming trees over 17th Street. You got that all done, right? Yeah. And um, we had an issue with an abandoned car on Florida, and uh, everybody helped with that. Lieutenant Blaylock kept my head on straight, and I stayed cool until we got that taken care of. <laughs> I tend to overreact a bit, but we got that taken care of. Um, I also had a, a person come to me, a citizen of the country club, and um, asked me to bring up the possibility of the city paving or putting in sidewalks in the country club. This was brand new to me. Um, they, so I just went, I'll just certainly bring it up, sir. And that, I left it at that. Um, anyway, that's something that we need to discuss, I guess. Um, I also had a complaint from, and I don't think that the commission can necessarily do anything about this, but people dumping uh, personal items into dumpsters that businesses pay for. Now, I was told by a, um, a sheriff's department, somebody that works there, 
that this can actually turn into a felony, and it's based on the weight of the trash they throw in the dumpster. Um, anyway, it's becoming an issue for me too, personally. And uh, uh, one of my neighbors, it's a real issue for him. And I just, I'd like to um, see if we can look into, I don't know what we can do other than put padlocks on them, but um, I'd like to see what we can do about that. And that's basically it for me. Thank you. Um, moving on, uh, Commissioner Barnes. Um, yes, I also attended one of the uh, open enrollments with Albatross, and I could tell you I was very impressed at the level of professionalism that they brought to the table. Um, they were very open in answering the questions that the employees had, um, and I think it's going to be a great partnership uh, for this next year and for years to come. So um, I just want to say thank you for bringing them to us. Thank you, Commissioner Friend. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just I did want to mention the Fuel Depot event. I just think that was a very well done. Uh, all the staff did such a great job. It really it was something that I think Lynn Haven could be proud of. We had it right here, and, and I just first time we actually got to move this out of the way and had it on stage, and we did. We had a lot of representatives here, so I think it's something we can be proud of. And Mayor, you did a great job on that. Um, uh, the staff did a great job. Yes, yeah, well, there. I mean, your, your part was <laughs> well you, done. Thank you, as, as speaking as the mayor, I think thank you did you, a great thank job. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, also attended the uh, employee tailgate. I think I was the only Georgia fan there, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> a lot of FSU folks around here <clears throat> and Gator fans. But uh, also the insurance, uh, I, I attended one of those. They did. They was very professional, well done. And lastly, I'd just like to say that I had the privilege of working with uh, some of the staff out uh, filling uh, sandbags yesterday. Luckily, we didn't have to use them. Uh, at least I hope no one had to use any of them. But uh, those guys just did a great job. They really, really worked hard. I think everything went as smooth as it could. And, uh, and we were able to provide that service for the residents of Lynn Haven. So back still a little sore, but I'll make it. You were out there a long time. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> I agree. It went very well. Um, okay. At this time, I'd like to call on uh, item number seven, the city manager's report. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at this time, I'd like for... Maria and uh, Ray Cochran come up front. I'm going to let Marie present Mr. Ray this, but uh, I guess it was a month ago, was it Ray? Something like a month ago. Ray, Ray was driving down the road and happened to see a uh, contractor uh, dangling from his rib cage on a piece of tin that had cut him severely. Uh, and luckily, Ray helped get him down and uh, saved the gentleman's life. So uh, at this time, I want to ask Maria, which uh, Ray works for Maria, to uh, present him with his plaque as well as a little small contribution for his heroic efforts. Mayor, if I may, just by, while, Ray's going, while Ray, Ray's going back, he was my, one of my sandbag buddies yesterday, and, and, and we, learned, we learned one thing yesterday. She was a slacker. No. Thank you. <laughs> no, we did not learn. What we learned, what did we learn, Ray? There's always one more. <laughs> and we learned that the mayor cannot direct traffic very well. Oh, I, I didn't need, see I that. I need classes from the police department. <laughs> and the sand is heavy. Yeah. Uh, city manager, want to continue with your? Yes, ma'am. And and I'd like to thank y'all coming out helping the employees yesterday. I think that was a great effort. And I was just kidding, we, Mr. Commissioner yeah. Friend. Uh, That's Commissioner Friend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But uh, it, was a, it was a great team effort, and uh, I appreciate the employees so much for dedicating their time. We had employees going through the city, picking up debris in case the storm got heavy. Had a lot of employees call in, just say, tell me what we could do. So a uh, great group of people here, very dedicated. Uh, moving right along, uh, the, uh, the city has received the county permit for golf cart crossing from Mosley Drive and Highway 389. Iowa Avenue and Highway 389, and Illinois Avenue and Highway 389. Part of this will be the city manager will be dropping the speed limit uh, on Mosley Drive to 25 miles an hour. Currently it's at 30. So uh, to adhere to the golf cart uh, standards. So I just want to bring you all aware of that. We have all the permits we need and everything we need to allow golf carts. We'll be putting up signs uh, indicating. Uh, number C, the city has decided to partner up with the ARC. Uh, this is something several of my staff and I have discussed. Uh, we will be partnering with the ARC in receiving two individuals to help us out uh, on a part-time basis. Uh, and uh, we're actually going to be doing interviews tomorrow. Uh, we hope to have one that will help us out part-time in the administrative building and the library. And the other individual will be helping us out at Leisure Services and the shelter. I think this is a great opportunity for the city of Lynn Haven to reach out to the ARC and, and be, be a community partner. So, uh, for your, I will need your uh, blessing on this right here, Mayor, is the city's donation of items from acquisition of property 7, 710 Kentucky Avenue. Uh, I'd like to donate the items there to the ARC of Bay. Uh, we understand they're going to use their property on Alabama Avenue reopen it and the property the old house that we're taking has some nice cabinets uh, dishwasher type items and um, air conditioning unit that will be thrown away uh, unless we donate it to someone like the ARC and I will need a motion for that. Is there a motion from the um, Commission to approve? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Any discussion from the public? Okay, thank you. Mr. White, would you call the roll? Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And I think that's a great thing to do. I imagine since school's out, but I, I'd like to uh, go ahead and, and announce this. Uh, I have the titles to the two vehicles that y'all agreed to last month uh, that we will be donating to Bay County School Board to use it for their reservists who help out at the schools, the SO. Uh, SRO uh, uh, individuals that, that volunteer time. So luckily I was told that we won't even have to strip these cars. So uh, we'll be just donating the whole cars. So That's I great. applaud y'all for that once again. Uh, the next thing that we'll have to have some action is the appointment of Mr. Jim Fishcorn as uh, Commissioner Russell's nominee to the Infrastructure Tax Oversight Committee. He will replace Mr. Charlie Commander, who was the Commissioner Sh Shad's appointment. According to Resolution 2017-02-673, each city commissioner has the right to nominate one member. Each member shall serve a three-year term and at pleasure of the commissioner who nominated the member. No member shall serve more than two consecutive terms. I'd like to make it known that uh, it wasn't nothing that Mr. Commander done. Uh, it, it was, uh, this was just something done prior to uh, Commissioner Russell becoming uh, on board and he would like to appoint someone to that uh, oversight committee. Is there, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, uh, second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, if I may, um, Mayor, um, I, I talked to Mr. Commander before I did this and, and he's fully aware of what I'm doing. Um, and just so you'll know the qualifications of Mr. Fishcorn and, 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 and just so I'll also let you know, he is my, my neighbor. Um, but Jim graduated with a civil engineering degree from in 1961, 81, thank you, from the Virginia, Virginia Military Institute. In addition to that, he has a master's degree, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to read all this, but uh, uh, he uh, retired colonel from the, from the, um, the military and uh, is in generally a, just a really good guy. So that's why I want him on the committee because I trust him to do what needs to be done. Thank you. 
Are there any comments from the public or questions? Mr. White, would you please call the roll for approval of Mr. Jim um, Frischkorn, Frisch, sorry, Frischkorn as Mr. Russell's appointee to the um, Oversight Committee? Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so that is approved. Congratulations. And did you say Colonel? Sorry? Retired Colonel? Retired Colonel Frischkorn. Yes, Congratulations. Colonel Frischkorn. <laughs> Uh, the next item, uh, commissioners and uh, mayor, is the city commission meeting dates for November and December. As you can see where the two fall, uh, I know in years past, I think you all have foregone these two meetings. I was wanting to know what uh, you all want to do this year. If so, I will need some direction. What is the pleasure of the commission? I move that we uh, cancel these two meetings. Is there a second or a further discussion? Is second. there a second? Second. Any discussion? Any discussion from the public? Uh, Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Stands approved. Thank you all. Uh, this time I, I have some pictures. Uh, if Ian will throw them up. You, some of the audience, some of you can see. We, I just want to give you an update. We started last Thursday uh, laying asphalt uh, on lots of roads. Uh, we have currently four contractors working out there. We have uh, local contractors. And of course, we have our engineering firm, Panhandle Engineering, which is doing a great job uh, working with them, uh, trying to determine where we need to go. And uh, But you can see we have some water lines being laid. Uh, they're, they're on top of each other working. So... We're getting a lot of work done in a real fast pace, uh, but uh, we have several roads. This is uh, 19th Street, I think. Is that right, Bobby? 19th, Vermont. Uh, what's more roads that's been paved? Rhode Island, Massachusetts has been paved, so I encourage you, if you want to see some, some of the new stuff, please ride down there. We've been getting some good comments uh, on roads, and... Uh, of course, you know, we, we're, our intention is to spend all the money that we have on the surtax before end of year uh, and then dip back in January and try to get more to keep this process moving uh, as fast as we can. That's fabulous news. I'm glad to see this half cent sales tax money go to work. Mayor, if I may, um, Michael, I've already had two people call me that uh, live off of 19th Street and said they love their new road. So we're already, we're already seeing an impact. That's great. Okay. Item number eight is the city attorney's report. Uh, no report, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Um, the consent agenda, I'll just go ahead and read through items nine through 12 and ask for a motion and a second. And then if there's any discussion on any item before we uh, vote, I'll allow time for that. Um, item number nine uh, is the approval of the minutes from um, August 22nd, uh, the regular meeting, 829, the special commission meeting. Um, item number 10, approval of Highway 77 as Mosley High School's 2017 homecoming parade route. Item number 11, request from the Supervisor of Elections, Mark Anderson, to hold early voting at the Lynn Haven City Hall Annex, meaning the chambers, and then uh, primary voting August 18th through 25th, 2018, general election October 27th through November 3rd, 2018. Item number 12, request from the Supervisor of Elections, Mark Anderson, to hold Election Day polling at the Lynn Haven City Hall Annex, known now as the Chambers, primary voting August 28, uh, 2018, and general election day November 6, 2018. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So I move. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any questions on any of these items or concerns? Any from the public? There appear to be none. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. It's the consent agenda stands approved. Old business, item number 13, an update on the negotiations for the amended and restated lease agreement for 817 Ohio Avenue with Roman Nations, MD of Nations, Best Family Health Care, PLLC, for three years. Um, I believe this will be city manager's update. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Ben and I met with uh, Mr. Nations about the facility, uh, and I will say uh, Commissioner Russell's uh, education level as far as what we should be paying, uh, people should be paying for medical offices was correct. Uh, I, I asked another uh, 
uh, person in the city that uh, rents out medical bills, and he told me 16 to 17 dollars per square foot for medical facilities. Uh, so we met with him and discussed, and you know, uh, it was decided that the city would be taking the property back over. Uh, he's going to be moving out, and within the next six months, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, is my intent to turn that into a facility for the city and offer more services to our citizens uh, for payment drops and things of that nature. Uh, and we, we've, we've outgrown the administrative building. I think we can utilize that building a lot better. Um, is there a motion that we um, follow through with the city manager's recommendation of um, terminating this lease within the next six months and then um, bringing this building back into the city's um, use and service? I move approval. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any I'm, comments? I'm, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I have a question, Mayor. Uh, it says that um, the lease is going to be for three years. Saying he's leaving in six months. Yes, ma'am. We're not renewing the lease with him. That was that's what we brought last time. Uh, was right. a three year, and based on the price and and our need for facilities, it was decided between us that you know uh, that'd be best to terminate this. Well, the lease is already over. So instead of renewing anything, just keep, you know, the city month to month. And, you're, and, and if I may, you're going month by month for the next six months, giving him time to find a place to move into. Yes, sir. And, and you know, we're very lenient with that. And if he needs more time, uh, you know, we got time to work with him. Uh, but he's been good doing a month by month for several months now. Okay. Other questions from the board? Any from the public? Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anders? Yes. Stands approved. Um, new business. Item number 14 is discussion and possible action regarding approval of a development order for Lynn Haven Bayou Park and Preserve. This is a quasi-judicial hearing, and so there may be those who need to be sworn in. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, uh, items number four, uh, 14 and 15 are quasi judicial hearings of the city of Lynn Haven. If anybody plans on presenting any testimony to the city, will you please stand and raise your right hand? You swear that you're gonna, the testimony you're going to provide is the truth upon penalty of perjury? I do. And if any commissioners had any ex parte communications regarding any of these items, please go ahead and disclose them on the record right now. I've had none. I've had none. I've had none. Sorry, I went out of order. I apologize. And I've had none. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, go ahead, um, Ms. Richard. This is a development order application for the Lynn Haven Bayou Park and Preserve. I think most of you are familiar with this project. Um, the applicant is the Trust for Public Lands, and the agent is Doug Hathaway. He is generally at these events, so I think probably because of the storm, um, he, he isn't here. Uh, the parcel is 08710-025-000. The location is south of McKitchen's Bayou, west of Deer Point Elementary School off Highway 2321. The land use is recreation open space. The size, 97.83 acres. It's currently vacant and the applicant wishes to construct a passive recreation park with BP money to include disc golf, fishing dock, walking tracks, and pavilion. And for the people that aren't familiar with this, um, the Trust for Public Land were tasked um, by P with BP funds to try and find suitable locations for creating um, on the water to create passive recreation, which means that you know they won't be manicured um, ball fields or anything. It will be kind of kept as natural as possible. Um, and even, you know, the play equipment will be kind of eco-friendly, that kind of thing. Um, and so they scouted around to try and find some suitable properties and they found this uh, portion of what used to be the DNH property, the TND, the John David DNH TND. Um, and they purchased this and although they have other projects in Florida, I believe this is the largest, the largest one. So we are very fortunate um, in having this. This shows the location of the property. This is the conceptual master plan, um, which was in your, your packets. And as I mentioned, there will be um, 
fishing docks and also where you can launch um, kayaks and that kind of thing, but not motorboats. Um, there'll be walking trails, a fitness track, disc golf, pavilions, an outdoor classroom for the schools. And the schools, some of the schools have been active participants in designing some of this. Um, and what they propose to do is to create this. Um, once it has been created, they will then um, give it to the city, donate it to the city with maintenance funds for 10 years. Are there, are there questions or concerns? Just one, one or two questions. Um, you mean, I mean, I think it's a great thing, and I think the city needs to approve it. Access to the property, um, mm -hmm. is that strictly going to be from the Linhaven side, or are they going to look at, um, obviously they're going to have to put a road in or something. It's, it's going to be, um, there's an access of 2321. Um, the road, the access road came before the commissioners for development order approval um, some months ago now. Um, so the road is actually going to be put in from 2321 um, to access that park, but will also be the access to the the north access to the DNH property as well, because eventually they're going to have the one going up by the charter school and then one coming down from um, 2321. And you can kind of see there where you can see the, the trail, kind of where the access is going to kind of come in to the north of the school. And I do have a pointy stick now, but I've left it in the office. So, so the only access is going to be 2321? There's not going to be now. One, But eventually there'll be one off of 390 also? Yes. OK. May I just have one um, comment? I, I just wanted to let you all know that uh, Mr. Hathaway and I identified an issue in the, in the deed that's coming to the city. It's not really part of this development order, but um, that has we've been talking about that. I've been speaking with their lawyers. I haven't heard from them in six months. And so I just wanted to make sure that you all were aware of that and that, that um, um, perhaps this should be conditionally approved, condi subject to resolving that one little deed issue that we need to get resolved. And I, I expected him here today, but I'm sure with the storm, he, he couldn't make it, so. I just want to make a comment um, as well, um, just for the benefit of, of the public and, and the, uh, the board. Um, uh, Deer Point Elementary School has had a great deal of input into the design um, of the property, the playground. They've had a lot of input about the theme out there, and, and the school and, and the administration staff out there are very excited about this park, and um, they've just really done a good job, the Deer Point anglers having a, a part in this park. Any other discussion or questions? Is there, is there a motion for acceptance um, pending um, Mr. Um, Jackson's comment about the deed issue? So move. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Any comments from the public or questions? Um, yes, sir. Um, we addressed this at the uh, planning. Rich Walker, 1106 Michigan. We addressed this at the uh, uh, planning commission. And um, it was very interesting, the discussion on the road. Presently, and what will be used will be the road coming in from the school. That was under the discussion when this was laid out the first thing. That road that you're thinking that will be put in is, um, I think it has a name. Uh, it hasn't been developed, thought of, and envisioned for 15 years. So if the school road is going to be used, and that just belongs to Bay County, as I brought up to the Planning Commission, if the school gets into a lockdown uh, situation, nobody's going in and out. And I don't think you're going to get permission to use that road that much, if you can. And I don't think that road that's coming off there, I'm just trying to think of the name of that road. It has all the sewer pipes and everything there right now. Pipeline Road. Pipeline Road, yes. Uh, I don't think they're going to get to it for a long while because DNH has been unable to develop that area. They've been unable to give it away. They've been unable to do anything with it. So finally, they coerced the taxpayers into getting to purchase that piece of property. That takes it off the tax rolls. We have no income. They could have gotten the park for free. You can ask about that later. 
So I, I don't understand where you're getting this information from and how and when it's going to be done. There's nothing for free here. At the end of 10 years, when the money goes out, Lynn Haven's going to be on the line to pay for this. Maintenance, everything. And most of the infrastructure will be old and be gone. So be careful of what people say and promise. It might not come true. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Ma there... Mayor, if I may? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, just, just for a quick correction. Taxpayer funds are not buying this property or developing it. It's the tri-up fund that BP has funded that's paying to buy this property and, and develop it. Now, I understand after 10 years, the city will have to kick in to, re to pay for it. But, but the Triumph Fund is also funding the 10 years' worth of maintenance on this property. I understand that. That's been said before. But the rebuttal to that is this. The BP funds are the taxpayers' money because we paid out of Bay County the money to put the barricade up to protect the bay. Okay, your comments were noted. That was taxpayers' money. So in the long run, this is taxpayers' money. And, and duly noted. And, and if, if I could just comment, too, and you have the, certainly the opportunity to respond to my comment as well, but we have had this discussion before, um, several times, you know, before the board, some new members, some old members, and um, thinking about the long, and we've agreed as a board, um, the long-term benefits of almost a 100-acre park to the citizens of Lynn Haven for us to have turned down such an amenity, especially since this park is, is more of a, it's a nature type park. Um, the maintenance on this park will not be the type of maintenance that will be associated with some of the others because of the rustic nature of it, because of the trails. And there is other access um, as far as um, the type of um, vehicles that you could take in on the dirt road, that, which goes beside uh, the Deer Point Elementary property, which we would be sharing because this is, even though it is Lynn Haven's property, one of the reasons that we as the board voted to um, access it and to accept it is because it's going to be a great partnership with the uh, Bay District Schools. And this is going to affect all of our children. It's going to give them great opportunities. And so um, having to take it over 10 years from now um, and keep up the maintenance of it, there's going to be very little deterioration in the type of um, infrastructure that they're putting in out there because of the, just the sheer rustic nature of it. It's a very natural, pristine setting. So I, um, I'd certainly hear what you say about taxpayer money, and I agree that we need to be good stewards, but I just, I just can't imagine this not being the right decision for our town. So that's just my thought. Can I add that at sure. the Planning Commission meeting um, last Tuesday, the Planning Board did vote unanimously to approve, recommended approval. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have a comment or concern about the park? Okay, um, is there a motion um, that we um, accept our, and approve the development order for the Lynn Haven? There was a motion. There was a motion. Thank you. And a second. We've had a lot of discussion already. Any further discussion? Thank you, Mr. Walker. Anybody else? Okay, at this time, would you please call the roll, Mr. White? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the motion is approved. Thank you. And Ms. Richard, if you'd like now um, to give us the um, um, information on the development order for Kalo Plaza Mini Strip Mall? Yes. This is uh, also a development order um, application. Uh, there's amendment up there in the title because um, it's not really an amendment as much as uh, it's part of the Walmart parent parcel. So um, this lot was on the original Walmart um, DO um, identified. The project is Kalo Plaza. The applicant is James Smoke. The agent is uh, James Lenina, Panhandle Engineering, but he's not here tonight, but Chris Forehand is here. So um, if you have any questions, I'm sure he'll be happy to answer. Parcel number 11667-285-002, and the land use is commercial. The location is the Walmart Out Parcel on Highway 77, south of Business Park Drive. It's the one that I... Uh, I think you probably all will recall having had a Doral Bank sign on it for the longest time. Um, it's been vacant for quite a long time. The size is 1.021 acres, and the applicant wishes to construct a three-unit mini mall, um, totaling 5,500 square feet on the vacant parcel in front of Walmart across from Taco Bell. This shows, this aerial shows the location, um, and 
This is a, a close-up. So um, to the top there is Highway 77. Walmart is on the south there. And then you've got Murphy Gas um, on the left. And what is being proposed is a, for now, is a, a sandwich shop, uh, Jersey Mike's, I think it's called, um, a barber shop, and also some retail. There's going to be some retail, but, but they don't know uh, what's going into the retail, the retail store as yet. And that was this, the site plan. I would also like to mention that um, this did also go before the Planning Commission, and they voted to recommend approval for it. All of the stormwater was taken care of within the Walmart out parcel, that big stormwater pond that they have there, that catered for this parcel also, so it could be 100% impervious. Are there any questions from the board? Yes, Mayor, if I may, I've got a, a sure. couple of questions. Um, I noticed that the, uh, the, the application says that there's going to be three businesses. Mm -hmm. The building is set up for four businesses. It's got four entrances and four rear doors. Um, um, on the rendering? I noticed that as well, but I kind of assumed that that was just like the look. Well, if, you look, if you look at the back of the door on, on the plans, it's showing four rear doors also, implying that eventually that, that larger section is going to be subdivided into two and made four businesses instead of three. So my question, and I don't have a problem with that because I'm pro-business, but I want to make sure the parking is there to, to accommodate four businesses. I, I'm thinking, and I'll let Chris speak, but I'm thinking that... I took it that this was kind of more of the, this is how it's going to look, uh, rather than this is the, the exact. Because it's in the corridor overlay, we require to see the architectural features as to, you know, to make sure that it's going to fit in with everything else on the overlay. But I'll let Chris answer that, because I thought we were only going to have three businesses in there. Commissioner Russell, I believe when they uh, first developed the plan, they had four. I think since then, they've changed it to three. Um, but e even though you mentioned the parking, it's based on square footage anyway. So even if okay. they did break it into four, it would still be covered in the parking. Okay, cool. And then also right. when they submit for, for the building permit, it would be covered again. That's, that's the only concern I have. Thank you. Anyone else from the board have a question or a concern? Mayor, the only thing I would just say is, is the architect does look right. I mean, I just, I, I know that we're going to make sure that it fits in with what else we've got going on down there. So. Just that's what I looked at when I saw the drawing there. Yeah, so it'll look nice. It'll be nice. Be a good addition. Mayor, I just had one small technical issue. The the uh, person who signed as owner is is not really clear how he's tied to the property, um, and so I'm sure he is. But we just need to get authorization for that, and so um, I would recommend we with, withhold the development order until we get that authorization. But you know, it's, it can be approved, but just subject to that uh, authorization. Mayor, if I may, I, I noticed that too, that the, um, the owner's name is not actually the same as, as, as what's recorded mm -hmm. as the owner. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Any questions from the public? Yes, ma'am. Janet Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. I feel the same way that Commissioner Friends feels, that, that it's going to be pleasing to the eye. My question for Amanda is, um, what is the back? Is the center sketch the back of the store that's going to be facing 77? No. What's um, facing 77? The, the top one is facing 77. Oh. How, are we en how are you entering it? Are you entering it from... From... Um, yes. Right. Are the are the if you go into Walmart, the gas station, and you're pulling in the large entrance. The gas station is on your left. Yes. Now you're going to take a left. Yes. And it's gas station, and then there's the building. Yes. But the fancy entrance is going to be facing 77, and the parking is going to be between the fancy entrance and 77, and not on the
Sure, go ahead. It finds, it's, it's similar to uh, the other little plaza that we have, both of the plazas we have. We have Cricket up there on the right, and then across the other street we have uh, China Star, where the building is kind of set back, but the parking's in front. And then you got 77. Oh, yeah, yeah. Counts. Yeah. Mayor, if I may. Ms. Walker, I understand your, your question because you're actually entering the building from the back, having to drive around the building to the front to park. It's, it's, it's awkward, but, but that's the way they've got it set up. I misunderstood. I thought the back was coming up 77. Yes. And the, the drive through, there's a drive through for the sandwich shop, and the drive through is kind of like on the, on the top there, so you would kind of come around, and that's on, on the top. Okay, any other questions or concerns? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Walker. Hey, yeah, I was tough to figure out how they were going to get in there. Uh, just one quick question. The traffic study originally done for Walmart was done four times um, and, until they got the results they needed. Um, was this configuration figured in to the traffic study for the original Walmart. The traffic study that was done for the Walmart parent parcel was done for all of the out parcels there as well. Um, and so they basically had vested trips. Um, they also, um, as part of Walmart going in, had to make all of those, they had to spend a lot of money making all of those improvements on 77 with the traffic signals and the turn lanes and everything. So they took care of all that at that time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions or concerns? Okay, so at this time, um, we'll ask Mr. Wyatt to please call for, um, for a vote, a but on the... I thought we already had the motion. I, I move that we accept the development order pending. Okay, hold on, hold on one second. We have to make the motion with the caveat that Mr. Jackson gave doing. to us about the owner, okay? Okay, yeah, okay I just want to make sure before you made the motion yeah, that we were that's, able to that's do That's actually that. what I was okay, doing. Thank I make you. a motion to accept the, de uh, accept the development order pending the uh, corrections in the deed, or the application. Second. Okay, there is a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. Mr. White, please call the roll. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the um, approval is there for um, item number 15. Item number 16 is the discussion and possible approval of the city's participation and contribution to the Bay County Transportation Disadvantage Program Curb to Curb Demand Response Service in the amount of $7,221.57. Any discussion or questions from the board? I have a question, Mayor. Uh, exactly what is it? <laughs> uh, go ahead, Mr. White. Now, this is basically for the elderly to ride the transit bus to doctor's appointments to some kind of care, dialysis, things of that nature. And uh, this is based on the, they have an app now at Bay County that can determine where they're picking up people and where they're carrying them. And based on those numbers, they can charge us accordingly. And that's our portion for the citizens of Lynn Haven. Thank you. Any other uh, discussion or questions? Mayor, if I may, uh, Michael, this is something that we've been doing for years, correct? Yes, sir. And it's in our budget, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions from the public? Is there a motion for acceptance? Move approval. Second. There's been a motion and a second for approval. Um, no uh, further questions. Mr. White, if you would, please call the roll. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So it stands approved. Item number 17 um, is a resolution revising the stormwater fees, and that resolution number is 2017-09-693. I'll ask the um, city manager to read that resolution. Resolution number 2017-09-693. A resolution of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, revising the city's established stormwater utility fees, amending Appendix A of the Lynn Haven Code of Ordinances, to include such revised fees and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for acceptance of this uh, resolution? So moved. A second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
Mayor, I, if I, if I may. Yes, ma'am. I'd just like to use the opportunity to say this, this is one of the hardest things that, that I've had to do as commissioner each year. And I know it goes based on the study, and I've talked to each city manager that we've had. And um, I just look forward to the new study and seeing if, if we just can't finally get some of that under control. Because it's, it's hard to ignore the, um, the comments that are made about transferring the money and the one money make, the one fund making more than it should or whatever. So I, I just look forward, and I know I've talked to the city manager about it, but I just wanted to say that uh, I look forward to the new study and see if we can't finally get it under control. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any other comments from the board? Yes, I have. I have question I guess so this is um, we're asking to revise the fees yes ma'am we'll have to increase for an increase of the fees 1.9 percent 3.9 this is for stormwater oh oh so that's just for stormwater yes ma'am that's based on uh, the former uh, studies that's been done However, if you, if you notice with the budget, we're about $1.4 million under budget in that fund. So 1.9% uh, does not get us anywhere close where we need to be. But, you know, that's the only tool I have to go by right now. Right. And who's going to pay that? Who's going to pay that? Uh, the water customers. It's based, on, it's based on the rates associated with, I think you have uh, the utility fees at the bottom of that resolution based on commercial and residential sites. Are we going to vote for each one of these individually? These resolutions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did that answer the question, Commissioner Tender? More or less, yes, thanks. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Questions from the public or comments from the public? Yes, sir. The reason I'm doing this is because we discussed it in the workshop. Absolutely. And this will get it in front of the public. Um, your question is very good there. Uh, this is an increase of all of them. This is a 1.9 increase, which will be $3. Usually the city manager explains it to the people. It's $3.61 per month. Okay. And then you have the next ones that follow. I hate to do one each at each. I just cover them all. This is a total of 9.26% for the year to the taxpayer. And as I mentioned in the previous meeting, with the raises in salaries, with the raises in salaries to the commissioners, with the uh, raising in taxes by the electric company, this is going to put a nice little burden on the taxpayer. And if you've forgotten, most of the taxpayers in this area are retired. And most of them are on fixed incomes. As I've said before, you base this on a survey. You can blame them. The people can't be blaming you. You blame them because they did the survey. You paid for it. You do not have to do this. I've said this before. I don't know, if you keep increasing taxes and everything like that, you're going to get their attention. Maybe some of this will get their attention. Your comment is exactly right. Thank you. Any other comments from the board or the public? Hey, okay, um, at this time, um, is there, did we already do a motion? No. Is there a motion for there, acceptance of resolution 2017 was, zero? There was a motion. Mm -hmm. I thought there was. Yeah. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Barnes and uh, Russell. Okay. That's, that's okay. I, when we get into the discussion, sometimes I forget what I've said and I've made my notes. But Okay, um, and then at this time, Mr. White, would you please call for a roll, for a res a roll call vote for Resolution 2017-09-693, revising the stormwater fees. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? No. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Item number 18, and, and that one is approved. Item number 18 is resolution 2017-09-694, which is a revision of the water fees. If you would please uh, read that resolution, uh, Mr. White. Resolution number 2017-09-694, a resolution amending rates and charges for residential and commercial water system, providing for an effective date. 
Thank you. Um, is there a motion for acceptance? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Yeah, I do have a question on. I, I am, I am um, cautiously, you know, accepting of the stormwater fees because I know that the stormwater is a problem that we have got to solve in Lynn Haven. Um, people in Lynn Haven, every time it rains, are afraid of what's going to happen to their property. So I just need some help with um, understanding the revision of the water fees. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, I, only thing I can tell you is, is based on looking at the studies done prior to me. Okay. Uh, this is the study, what the study has outlined. That's the reason I have spoken to you and several of the commission about the dateness, the outdateness of some of these studies. Uh, right now, I, I cannot tell you what that number is. And, you know, I have a, a lot of experience with rates and studies with electric water right. and different services. Right. Uh, I do believe in studies. I do believe uh, if they're done properly, they, they, they can give you a guideline where you need to be. Uh, uh, and, you know, you do have to make sure that you capture all your costs and, and look at the future. And, and some of these monies is for future upgrades. Uh, for instance, if you just look at the, the wastewater plant, I mean, we're, you know, we're looking at in the budget, there's $375,000 in there to have to do a study getting the close to the 75 percent of occupancy of that that plant so you know you have to look at age of age of uh, your infrastructure and and also the cost associated with it. Mary, and, uh, go ahead I'm can, sorry let, let me also kind of shed some light on this and I know Mr. Walker is well aware of it so he's going to chime in as well um, the reason that the city went with the Burton study was because some time ago prior to I got on the commission, the water rates and the sewer rates were going to double-digit numbers. Right. And so the city decided, instead of having to go with double digits, that we would get a study done and use that study based on the consumer price index so that no one would have to come out of their pocket with so much money all at one time. That was the whole reason behind this see, this Burton study. Um, I understand the Burton study. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole reason behind it. Also, going along with what the city manager has said, if we had to do some upgrades and things of that nature, that money would already be there, and we wouldn't have to go back to the citizens and ask them to pay more money. So if we do it based on the CPI, everybody's pretty much paying the same thing and it's not such a huge amount of money that the citizen is having to dish out at one time. That's the whole purpose behind this CPI. If we don't keep doing this by the CPI, we're going to fall right back in that same trap again, and we're going to find ourselves raising rates at rates that we don't want people to have to pay. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. And anyone else have a comment about the... Um study or the, the water. I, I, I respect the, the intent behind the Burton study and, and I, I think I had the same argument last year when we were going through the different fees. Um, the stormwater is something, and I'm not trying to, to be a soapbox or anything, but the stormwater is, is something that has been a, a real neglected item and, I, and I, as much as I hate to you know, see anything increased, I can see that. I, I just have real reservations on our water, wastewater, and solid waste, um, not not based on anything except just from, from my own studies and my own feelings about it. Um, I understand CPI. I understand that, that a rate could come later that might be higher. What I'm wondering is on, on the other three resolutions, 18, 19, and 20, would there be a reason why that could not be postponed into the next meeting just to give a little more time. I'd like to have a little more discussion time with city manager and your thoughts on the budget. I'd like to have a little more time on that burden study to see where we what we did last year and where we are now before we take the vote on that. I, I and if and if the rest of the commission feels differently about it, you know, please speak up. But that's just my thought. So Mayor, I, I would love to see Burton come out and since we got we have pretty much a brand new commission for them to give even more background as to why we went with this so that they can make it a little bit more clear and understand. And to the public as well. And to the we public can, as well. That'll be, that'll because be I would rather pay 1.9 than to have to come up with 
I, I totally, I, I hear what you're, I hear what you're saying, time. but I, I would like for, and especially if we do it at the, if we were to put this on the agenda for the next meeting, my thought is that would be an evening meeting. It would be the last meeting of the month. We could advertise it. We could have a large number of public, you know, members here, and then we could, you know, do that presentation, and then the public could see. And I think that would just be a good way to do it because right now, I think voting on this tonight is just like the public sees. Well, the commission just voted to raise every one of my fees, and I'm not sure why. Well, if we do this, I, I would love to see a representative from Burton and Associates to be here to answer any questions. How do, thank you. How does the rest of the board feel about that? I'd move we table the item until the next meeting. Okay, so table items 18, 19, and 20. Yes, ma'am. Is there a second? Well, you've well, got, wait, I've already well, you have a motion on the table, Mayor. No, on, yeah, on 18, item 19. 18. Go ahead, I'm okay. sorry. Mr. Barnes made a motion and it was seconded by Mr. Russell. Commissioner Russell. Okay, so Commissioner we need Barnes. to withdraw Mr. Barnes's motion first, is what you're telling me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Barnes. So are Commissioner we, Barnes. I'm are sorry. we going to have the. We, we're going to withdraw your, your motion, and then Mr. Commissioner Friend is making a motion that we table it to the next meeting. Okay, are you wanting Burton and Associates to be here? Yes. Okay, I will draw my motion. Thank you. I will draw my second. Thank you. So now Commissioner Friend has made a motion that we table items 18 through 20 until the uh, last meeting in September. And at um, that time, we'll have a representative to describe the Burton study to the public and to the board, and then we'll make a decision. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Thank you. And that stands approved. I think that was a great decision. Um, item number 21 is discussion and possible action for a non-city sponsored event requesting barricades and trash cans for a Christmas craft show from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on November 4th. The streets would be blocked from Florida Avenue and 9th Street. Um, I believe that's Commissioner Tender's item, so I'll just turn that over to you. Thank you. Um, I had some folks from uh, Roberts Hall come, and as many of you know, they have... Uh, two or three very large craft shows from now until Christmas. Well, this year they've canceled the uh, big craft show at the Bay County Fairgrounds, and they have this little craft show on November 4th over here, and they've got hundreds of people wanting to come and be in this craft show, and they can't do it inside the building. I mean, there's just not enough room. So what, they, um, what they're asking for is if we could just put barricades right there at 9 in Florida and at the end of the doctor's parking lot, because he's already given them permission to use that parking lot as well for vendors. Uh, and it's not a city thing. We're not looking for anything other than just the barricades and a few trash cans. Okay. Is there a motion um, that we allow this um, to, go, to, go, to go forward? I'm sorry. I make the motion. <laughs> Second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions or discussion from the board? There appear to be none. Any questions from the public? Yes, ma'am. Janet Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. I would urge the commission to go along with this. Anything that we can bring attention to Lynn Haven and the nice functions that happen here, I think, are a plus for the city. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Tender. Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So it stands approved. That will be a, a great activity for, for Lynn Haven. Um, then item number uh, 22 is um, discussion about the medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, we had passed Ordinance 1026 by the Commission uh, January 10, 2017, establishing a temporary moratorium. And if you recall, our reason for that was um, to wait and see what types of limitations or regulations that the state would, would place upon municipalities. I'm sure many of you have done your own reading and your own research, but I just wanted to um, just present just a couple of items for the, um, the public and for you as well. And please, um, Mr. Jackson, feel free if, if I misspeak on something to correct me. But um, at this point in time, um, there are several cities in Florida who have already um, adopted a code or, or an ordinance for their city for allowing um, medical marijuana dispensaries to exist in the cities. So I just had a couple of um, uh, statistics. In Bay County, um, and, and indeed across the state of Florida, we sort of mirrored it, um, over 70% 
of the public indicated that they were in favor of um, approving medical marijuana use in the state. I did look up our Lynn Haven precincts to see what our percentages were, and Precinct 18 was 62.90 percent in favor, and Precinct 19 was 68.65 percent in favor. So that kind of gave me a feel of what Lynn Haven wanted. Um, at this point in time, um, local governments, and this is um, just based on information that I received at the League of Cities um, uh, conference uh, in Orlando, we have basically two options on how we can regulate our dispensary of locations, and that is that we do nothing. Um, if we do nothing at all, then what we're doing is that we're just waiting to see if one of these dispensaries wants to come into Lynn Haven and place um, uh, one of the dispensaries here. And um, their um, ability to place a dispensary has to be anywhere that a regular pharmacy is allowed to place them. Um, if we, uh, the only other option that we have is to ban them outright. So we, we can't, you know, say, oh, well, you can come into our community, but you can only be on this street or that street. And you might have noticed that Panama City Beach, as well as some other cities, had um, passed ordinances back in the spring. Many of them at this point are relying on possibly that the state would grandfather their ordinances in. There's no guarantee of that. They're maybe going to be in some litigation because the state now has this policy that you either ban them or you have to allow them in all areas where pharmacies are. So a couple of things that I did learn that I was not all of that um, familiar with is truly even Knox are the two main dispensaries um, in Florida. There are more than two. And I did get to see um, quite a bit of information on what these dispensaries look like. They basically look like a jewelry store or a very high-end um, cosmetic store. Uh, the way they're set up, I mean, they're, they're beautiful. Um, they're not allowed to have any kind of signage like what you might think that you would see on, on a facility like that. It doesn't look like, um, um, you know, a tattoo parlor or those kinds of, you know, of, of, you know wild-looking signs. The signage, everything's regulated. Um, the things that I did not know that I learned as I went through um, some of this is that um, this business is strictly a cash business. People cannot use credit cards, checks. It's strictly a cash business. Um, it is still against federal law. Um, medical marijuana, even though 29 states and the District of Columbia have adopted this policy, um, it is against federal law. It is still considered a Schedule I drug. Uh, a doctor cannot write you a prescription for marijuana. They can write you a recommendation. And this recommendation for the amount that you're allowed to use, you take this to one of these dispensaries, and then they fill that recommendation with how much you're allowed to have per month. And they can prescribe for up to 45 days. Um, what I would say is that there is a sp it is a very difficult process even as a, as a, as a very uh, severely ill person. I have a, a person here in town that I'm very good friends with who's very uh, in, in the last stages of pancreatic cancer. Very difficult to get this done. It takes about 60 days to get this medical marijuana patient card. You can only see a marijuana uh, prescribing approved physician who's been approved by the state. There are about 1,200 of those physicians at this point in time. So that, that's kind of a lot of information. Um, under President Obama and Eric Holder as the uh, um, AG, he had a, sort of a hands-off policy from the states. Um, with the new administration, we're not sure where the federal government is on this. President Trump has made this statement publicly that he would be in favor of medical marijuana in the states, not touching that, but not to, he would not, not so much on the recreational marijuana. Um, Attorney General Sessions has made the comment, um, several comments that indicate that he might be more inclined to disagree with the states. So with all that said, <laughs> um, we have two options, and I certainly want our attorney to follow up and make sure that I've said everything correctly. But um, even with all that said, um, my personal opinion about this is that we're here to represent the will of the people. And I um, will probably personally, I won't tell you how I'm going to vote, but I will just say that we're here to represent the will of the people. And um, right now, if you're in Lynn Haven and you have a medical marijuana card, you've been prescribed, excuse me, recommended um, an amount of marijuana t that you need for whatever the disease is. Um, cancer. There's a list. And, and please go on the websites and look at all the information about this. You would have to drive to either Pensacola or Tallahassee right now 
to get to a dispensary. So that's about 100 miles in either direction. It cannot be mailed for obvious reasons because it's considered you know, a federally. Um, and then one other um, point is that if, if we um, adopt some sort of resolution, in, in other words, saying that we would allow them in the city limits of Lynn Haven, just, and whether we do or not, really, we need to also, in the future, be considering what our policy will be if we have a city employee who is using this medical marijuana because of a physical condition, there are HIPAA laws, they shouldn't have to disclose that they're ill, but at the same time, if they have to be tested, that this could show up in their you know, medical test as a Schedule One drug. So lots of things to consider. It was a six-hour seminar I went to, and I've got a lot of information that I can share, you know, with you further. But at this point in time, my understanding is we have the option to do nothing. Um, I can't picture, and the, and the main thing that I did get from it is that most of these um, facilities like to be in a very well-seen area, like a main road. They don't want to be on little side streets. They don't want to be tucked away. And the reason for that is because they are a cash business and they want to be out so that the law enforcement can see them and that type of thing. I don't picture that we would have 15 of these trying to locate right here in the middle of Lynn Haven. We're just not that big. So if we do nothing, we just wait and see if somebody shows up or we can outright vote to ban it, which you know our citizenry has said something different. So I'll leave it at that. And Mr. Jackson, if you'd like to add to that, and then we'll see where we go. Um, yes, ma'am. I, I don't know if the commission has any questions. Just as a, a reminder, I think the mayor mentioned it that the you know the voters um, approved this in November. Uh, the city, along with almost every other city in Bay County and the county, put a moratorium in place pending the rules of the legislature. Uh, the legislature uh, kind of surprised everybody at the last second and passed rules. Uh, those rules basically preempt all the cities and county rules and, and, and leave most of the regulations to the state. Uh, the only exceptions are one, the cities have the right to ban it outright, to ban the dispensaries outright is one. And then two, if you do regulate them, um, you can't regulate anything that's directly regulated by the state, but you can do location, but you can't do location any differently than a pharmacy. Um, and we have not looked at our code to see if you know, there's lots of different pharmacies. There's, you know, Adams, which is basically a, a traditional pharmacy, and then you have like Publix and CVS, and that are kind of grocery stores, pharmacies, other. You know, and so that's an area that we could look at if the commission wants to regulate these. Um, as far as the, you know, um, the state rules are pretty strict, as the mayor said about how this is how this is handled. This, it, it doesn't appear that the rules allow something like a tattoo parlor or. Um, you know, I was just out in Colorado, and they're advertised all over there. Of course, that's recreational, but uh, the, the rules are pretty strict about how they can advertise um, and how they handle the product. Um, they also, it's also very limiting in that there's only 12 um, treatment centers across the state right now, and each treatment center is limited to 25 dispensaries. So that's the most right now that you could have is 300 dispensaries in the state. Um, I don't know where Lynn Haven would fit in that priority, but um, so the decision I think that you know after the more our more term has expired, and so I, really I think the decision is what does the commission what's the pleasure of the commission? The options are to to ban them outright would be one. All this would require an ordinance. Uh, two, you could regulate them like a pharmacy and look ha, take another look at our pharmacy regulations as far as location and all that other all the other things that come along with a with um, land development code. Uh, and then finally, let's do nothing, and we're just subject to the state rules, which are pretty strict o overall. They are pretty strict. Um, locally, I know that Springfield has decided to ban them, and they've, they're going through that process. Callaway is including them in their ULDC, just like a pharmacy, and their unified land development code, just like a pharmacy. I don't know what the other cities have done. I don't think they have taken any approach yet. Panama City Beach has an ordinance that they passed in May, and they gave specific locations, like on Back Beach Road and all that, and, and, and the feeling was at the League of Cities that those type of ordinances that were passed before might be grandfathered in, but it was just as strong a possibility as they might not. That was what they told mm -hmm. us. So. Mayor, um, two things. One, when I'm done, could you repeat the percentages that you quoted earlier? And then second, um, Rob, are there restrictions on what they can sell? If they, if they, you know, like with, with a liquor license, if you sell liquor, you can't sell in anything else. It, are they going to be restricted to only selling the marijuana? 
Yes, and there, there is also a restriction in Florida right now. Marijuana cannot be smoked, but it can be vaped. They have oils that they, that they do sell. That's, that's a restriction. Can you add to that? Yeah, yes, sir. That, that they can only, they can only, they're treating, the state has treated it like a, like a true medical facility, for a pharmacy, and they don't, they're not allowed to sell anything else. There's no advertising in there. Uh, one thing I thought was kind of unusual, they're not even allowed to, um, in the waiting area, they all have to have a waiting area, they have to have 24-hour surveillance, uh, video camera surveillance, and two employees or security guards with them at all times on the locations. have to have the medical card in your position, p possession to even go into one of the, f of the facilities. Could so you, could is you it my understanding that the type of marijuana that they use, the part that, you know, makes people high, is that part extracted from it? Is that? Um, the levels are not as high, okay. but it is not extracted. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I understand. Florida already has a, what's called low THC medical marijuana. Uh, that is allowed right now. It's called Charlotte's Law, Charlotte's Web, I think, or something like that. Yeah, Charlotte's Law. Uh, that has been preempted, and that's all part of this new regulatory scheme. And so there are restrictions on where you can use, medically use marijuana um, based on the type, the, the quantity of the THC. So low THC can be used pretty much anywhere, but uh, regular THC, I guess for lack of a better word, can't be used in public. It can't be used on public transportation, it can't be, I mean, there's a lot of restrictions on where it can be used. And of course it cannot, as the mayor said, it can't be smoked, although there is a lawsuit on that right now. Um, mayor, could you repeat the, um, the approval percentages on the vote too? Um, yes. Hold on, I'm sorry. Um, for precincts 18 and 19 are, are Lynn Haven, and um, precinct 18 was 62.90%, and precinct 19 was 68.63%. And um, I will say that most of the other precincts um, were 70 and above, but we had to have a super majority, 60% or above. There was only one precinct in Bay County, number 16, that was just slightly below the 60. That was 59.62. So there's really no hurry for us to do anything right now. Am, am I correct? My, my under, go ahead, Rob. I'm sorry. Uh, so there's no, there's no deadline okay. on, on this. There's no, I mean, other than the fact that a moratorium has expired. Um, you know, so now anybody could, a dispensary could arguably come in and apply tomorrow for. Because, because the state has, you know, because of their right, regulations. Right, and they would be subject to the state rules. So, and, and I, if, you know, if, if you're unsure about it at this point, you know, I mean, I, I obviously kind of stated my opinion because of the percentages of the voters who have voted for this. But um, if you're unsure about it, there are just numerous websites with, you know, facts, questions that you can look at and do a little more research before we go forward, just whatever you think. Well, Mayor, I'd, I'd, I'd go ahead and uh, make a motion. I really appreciate all the information. I think you've done a, a great job presenting that. And uh, I'd just make a motion now that we go ahead and uh, uh, have city manager, city attorney start drawing up the uh, resolution to incorporate the dispensaries. Um, the only thing I would hesitate on is, um, it sounds like the state's trying to regulate the number, but I, I would like maybe the resolution to reflect some type of number in there. I don't know that we have that with the pharmacy now. We probably couldn't do it, really. We can't say you can only have two dispensaries. And yeah, we, yeah, we're specifically prohibited by the state from regulating the number okay. of dispensaries in town. So then I, I would make the motion that we move forward and, and do it as another pharmacy. I'll second it. There's been a motion and a second that we move forward um, to allow the dispensaries if they're regulated in the same way as a pharmacy. Is that correct? Did I, did I frame that up? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we, we, it would require an ordinance to come back to change our land development code, and we would in include them just like a pharmacy in the land development code. Okay. Any other discussion questions? Any well, questions? I just there? wanted to say that I had, um, I had an in-law that used the medical marijuana for the last two months of his life and it made a huge difference in his comfort level. Thank you. Any comments from the public or questions? Okay, at this time, well, would you please call the roll, Mr. White? Mayor, I'll go ahead and add, if, if I can, since, since you made a, a comment. I, I'd like to also just add that my mom died from uh, lung cancer, and uh, I would have liked for it to be available. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? 
Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so it stands approved. I didn't expect that. Let's see, I lost my place. I'm sorry. At this time, um, I lose the page. <laughs> We're at the last item. It's been a long uh, meeting. Thank you for your patience. Item number 23 is public commentary. If anyone would like to speak to any uh, point that's been discussed this evening or something that you'd like to bring up that we haven't talked about. Yes. I, th I would just, I'm, I'm kind of emotional over what you said because I lost my mother to cancer too, but that's not really why I came up. <laughs> um, I came up because I just wanted to... Um, let you all know that um, the new city manager did a really excellent job, I think, with the hurricane preparedness and everything. And I think we were really lucky that it didn't hit us. But I don't think that we could have really been any more prepared in case, you know, it had have done. And the way he was with the employees and, you know, how accommodating he has been and thoughtful and caring, I'm, I'm just really impressed. Thank you for coming forward and saying that. Thank you, Mr. White. Anyone else? Okay, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. We'll see you at the next one. Thank you for being here.